Okay, so we're starting the first problem in chapter 2, 2.1. We'll do A, B, and C. So, so first to start off with part A, um, we need to, this is all about dimensions. So we're switching from one dimension to another dimension. Sometimes it's a multi-dimension unit. Sometimes it's just time, one time to another time. Sometimes it's a speed, uh, one speed to another speed. And I'm not familiar with the last dimension, part C, but uh, it's certainly not a common dimension or one that I've worked with. Um, but we can still transfer from one dimension to another if we just take it one step at a time. All right, starting. So, okay, so we start off with three, three weeks. That's what WK stands for, I'm assuming. Um, I haven't um, seen that before, but a week is not a common amount of time that you measure in, but um, this is what we're using here. Okay, so we start off with three weeks and we need to change it to three milliseconds. So we're going from three weeks to we don't know how many milliseconds that is, but since they're both um, times, then we can represent a time either as a, a week or a millisecond. That's fine. Um, okay, so we start off with three weeks, we're going to milliseconds. Okay, so we need to use dimensional equations in order to convert this. Um, so starting off with three weeks, we need to have dimensional equations such as how many weeks, I mean, if we knew how many, exactly how many weeks were in a millisecond, we could just put, um, in one week, there is, um, this number, X number of milliseconds. If we knew what that conversion was, then we could just say three times, whatever that number X equals uh, 3x, and that's in milliseconds, 3 times x milliseconds, and then we'd be done. However, I do not know how many um, weeks, uh, milliseconds are in a week, so we're going to have to take this more like one step at a time. Um, so let's take it one step at a time and just say, okay, um, I know how many days are in a week, so um, there's seven days in a week, one week. Okay, um, you always want to make sure that if you have weeks up here, three weeks, you're dividing by the number of weeks and you're multiplying by the number of days. So then when we go through and we multiply and divide all these units, we divide a, a week divided by a week equals one. Anything divided by itself equals one. So in terms of units, um, we would just cross out week on the top. If we cross out a week on the top, we need to cross out a week on the bottom. So we would cross those units out and we would just be left with days. So how many days are in a week? Seven. Um, how many days are in three weeks? We'd do seven times three. That'd be 21 days in three weeks. Okay, but that's not what they asked for. They asked for milliseconds. So we need to keep going. Okay, so we have three weeks. Goes to days. Then we go to... I know that there are 24 hours in one day. And I know that there are 60 minutes in one hour and that there are 60 seconds in one minute and that there are 1,000, see if I can fit it in here, seconds in, oh, milliseconds milliseconds in one now you see why i like having the fat pencil i can just kind of smudge that into what i want it to look like all right into 1000 milliseconds in one second okay um now if we go through and we cross out the days and we cross out the hours and we cross out the minutes and we cross out the seconds the only unit that we're left with is milliseconds so if we multiply all these numbers together you know three divided by one times seven 24 divided by 1, and 24 divided by 1, um, 
times this number 21 equals you know and so on and so forth and then you know if we multiply these out like i said we would get the number of milliseconds all right so what this ends up being get out your calculators right we get 1.8144 and so on and so forth times 10 to 9 milliseconds okay but this is not our final answer because this makes it appear as though we know this very very accurately but we the, i mean the initially there was only one significant figure in three weeks they said that there was only one significant figure three weeks so we don't know if that's 3.1 weeks or 3.3 weeks or 3.78153 weeks you know we only got three weeks, one one number, so that's as many significant figures that we have. So sig fig is important, and in this problem, it equals one. So the number of milliseconds should also only be accurate to one significant figure. So then that would mean two times 10 to the nine is more accurate representation of of what the number of weeks are. Um, in some cases, some books um, will say that uh, if one is the lead figure, like it is in this, um, you could leave one as, and that wouldn't count towards your significant figure. And so then the answer could be um, 1.88 being the significant figure because um, it gives one, the one just a little bit more um, accuracy that's a little uh, more accurate to having one significant figure here. So like counting one is, is they don't count that as a significant figure. Um, so some books you'll see it be um, like this. Um, so, um, but in some cases, um, this could also just be your answer. It depends on how accurate you knew how many weeks you had and how accurate these conversion factors here. In this case, they're all exact. So um, so really the significant, significant figure that we're relying on here is the number of weeks. All right, so that's the answer to part A. Now, if we do um, part B, let's get rid of this and do part B. Let's make that into a B. All right, part B. We're changing 38.1 feet to, a uh, feet per second to um, a certain number of miles per hour. Uh, those are pretty common. Those are speeds. That's a length per time. So that's a certain velocity or unit of velocity, length per time. We're changing that from feet per second into miles per hour. Maybe you're driving your car in feet per second and you want to know how fast you're going miles per hour. So, okay. So we do the same thing. We break this up. 38.1 feet we put feet up on the top because it's in the numerator and then we put seconds down at the bottom denominator um, now like I said we always want to make sure we're canceling out the right units so we need to know how many feet are in a mile so there are 500 and you can google all of these things um, a lot of uh, google if you just type in how many feet in a mile google will just pop up you know how many feet are in a mile so use that that's your friend you can also use the front of the book um, they have some conversion factors there. But uh, if they don't, like I said, really easy to just Google some of these and you can get them really quickly. So, okay, so we got 38.1 feet per second. Um, we're just divided by feet. Remember, you always have to, feet needs to be divided by feet. If we had this flipped, if we had this conversion factor flipped, then we would have feet squared per mile, and our units would start to get really complicated. Um, 
feet squared per mile. Yeah, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So what we what we want to do, you want to make sure you're dividing feet by feet so then the feet cancel out and you're just left with the number of miles. That's important. Okay, so um, 38.1 feet divided by feet. All right, so now we have miles in the numerator. That's what we wanted here. We have miles here, miles here. Perfect. Okay, now we just need to do the time. We'll just do it the same way. 60 seconds in a minute. Notice how mi seconds went on the top here. That's because the seconds over here are on the bottom. Seconds over here are on the top. So we want to make sure those cancel out. And we're left with minutes. Then we go to hours. How many minutes in an hour? There are 60. All right. So now we have hours on the bottom and hours on the bottom there. So now we have miles per hour. We just need to multiply this out. And this ends up equaling 25.977 yada 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 miles per hour. Okay. How many significant figures do we start with? We started with three significant figures. So sig figs equals three. Right now I'm showing five, so we definitely don't have five. So let's cut that back down and say, actually a better representation of what we have is 26.0 miles per hour. That's a much better representation of what we have. Okay. And that's it for part B. So now we can get rid of that and move on to part C. Okay, well, let's get rid of that. Um, part C. Okay. Part C. Okay, so we are going from 554. Like I said, these are pretty odd units, but it's nice that they have uh, a unit that has uh, an exponent in it. Let's, let's highlight that. Exponent. You have to pay attention to these. Those are important. Um, then we have uh, day... That's a measurement of time and kilograms, mass. So um, uh, large amount, you know, large dimension of, of uh, you know, four dimensions of length divided by time and mass goes to a different set of dimensions. And if they want to know what it is in centimeter, four per minute gram. Okay, we've got four units of length at the top. We have um, one time unit and we have one mass unit. So that all lines up. So now we need to convert these and we'll just take it one unit at a time. Per day kg, kilogram. All right, so let's do the um, numerator first with the mass, uh, the, the meters, four meters to centimeters. All right, so one meter, and we'll raise that you know, four times. And then uh, how many meters or centimeters are in a meter there are 100 centimeters in a meter and we will also raise that to the fourth power so then we have four meters on the bottom and those four meters cancel with those four meters and then we have you know 100 centimeters t to the fourth power so so you know pay attention to that to the fourth power that means that um we need to multiply that, or, you know, that 100 times 100 times 100 times 100, four times, um, in order to make the right conversion there. So don't forget to do that when you're multiplying this out. Um, then we can go from 
uh, let's take care of the days. Let's do the time next. Now we're now we're doing time days into days into minutes. Okay, so that's not too hard. We've done that before already. We got one day, twenty four hours. We've got one hour into sixty minutes. We got oh yeah, that's it. Is that one hour and six minutes? Now we've got days canceling out and we have hours canceling out and we're left with the minutes perfect all right we got our meters canceling out all right now we have to change the mass we have kilograms and we're going into grams that is kg kilograms going into grams so how many kilograms in a gram well there are 1000 1000 grams in one kilogram. Okay, so now we multiply this out. So that's 554 times 100 times 100 times 100 times 100, four times, divided by 24, divided by 60, divided by 1,000. And that equals uh, 3, 8, 4, 7, 2 point. Two, da, 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 da. keeps going and going centimeters four per minute gram okay well back to the sig figs all right and how many sig figs do we start off with we had three okay so now we need to this is where scientific notation comes in big um, because it's really easy to represent numbers how many significant figures you have in scientific notation um, as opposed to standard decimal placement, um, how we're used to seeing it. Sorry. So it's really easy to write how many significant figures you have in scientific notation as opposed to um, how we normally see numbers written out in, you know, in a manner kind of like that. Um, so scientific notation is much better to use here. So let's rewrite this in scientific notation with three significant figures. Um, times 10 to the four, we're moving this over one, two, three, four decimal places, times 10 to the four. And our units, centimeters four per minute gram. Okay, and then that is the answer. So that is the answer to um, the first problem in the book. All right, I hope you found this episode helpful. I'll put the corrections to the video in the video description, and I'll look for any errors you noticed in the comments. Thanks for watching.